Okay, now it says I'm live. Hello, everybody. Welcome. So now we're live streaming. And let's see how this goes. So welcome back to the shop. It's 2020. Um, we're going to try this live stream thing. I'm going to talk. Hopefully you guys have audio. Uh, hopefully some people will join us here shortly. Um, let's see, am I even, doesn't even say I'm live, hmm, okay, well, <clears throat> so, I was going to answer COVID-19 questions, see how things are going, but before I get into that, I think I'm going to, uh, talk a little bit about where we've been, what I've been doing the last couple months. Um, mostly I've been out doing parent stuff and uh, we've had lots of stuff with the kids going on Liam's getting ready to uh, cross over to Cub Scouts he's um, he's doing really well there uh, I've been studying a lot. I, I took a, a certification exam for work and I passed it, so awesome. That took up a lot of time. Oh, someone's watching me. So this is good. Can he hear me is the next question. We'll find out. Um, but that's why I haven't been making YouTube videos, is I just, I haven't had time to get out in the shop. Oh good, audio is coming through 5x5. Five five. Excellent, Chris. So Chris, do you have any coronavirus questions? I'm also not sure about the lag uh, in this whole process. Uh, you can text them in, you could try the uh, smart chat there. Ah, he's writing. About a 60 second delay. Holy crap. Um, that's not going to fly. 60 second delay. Wow. That, that's bad. Um, not sure how to fix that. Let's see. <clears throat> oh, and I have someone in my comments. Excellent. Hello, Lauren. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for stopping by the garage. Uh, hopefully this did not interrupt your uh, Dungeons & Dragons play too much. So, <clears throat> yeah, COVID-19. I hope you're all preparing. What is the fatality rate in healthy, non-elderly, non-child infections? You cannot fix the delay, haha. Uh, the fatality rate in mostly healthy people is less than 2%. Um, what we're seeing coming out of China and some other places is the mortality rate goes up as you add comorbid conditions or things like heart disease, lung disease. I, I dare say that I think if you're a smoker, you're going to have a really hard time with COVID-19. Um, but they haven't come out with that data yet. The mortality rate increases as you get older. Uh, so it, people in their 80s, it's hitting them pretty hard. 70s. I have to go back to D&D. &D. We'll check back later. Well, thank you, Lauren, for stopping by. Um, again, the, the mortality rate texted the question in. Um, the older you get, the worse this virus is probably going to be. Um, the younger and healthier you are, you're, you're probably going to be good. 
And you see this in a lot of things. Um, most flu epidemics, elderly persons tend to get it and require hospitalization and um, care. Um, people that have underlying health conditions have more complications. And I think we're gonna see that with COVID-19. I think you're gonna see people that have COPD um, and underlying things like that have a much harder time with it. Um, but the data I really wanna see is the smokers. Southeast Asia, China, the Far East, heavily, heavily smoking area. And I really would love to see what that mortality data looks like, smoker versus not. And I'll be honest, I have not looked for it. I just I haven't had time. Uh, YouTube keeps giving me this streaming error, so I don't know if I have to move this stream um, into the house closer to my router. I, I don't know. Um, I have four connected viewers. That is awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah, so that's that's the mortality. Um, in a professional capacity, I was interviewed today uh, about the shortage of PPE and things like that. And, you know, there, there is a shortage and there's not a hell of a lot we can do about it. I think the best thing you can do is prepare for things like a hurricane. Have your emergency kit ready. Have your pantry stocked. Make sure you've got soap, potable water. Um, prepare for inevitable delays. Basic um, CYA adult prepping that you wouldn't see on Doomsday Prepper is what I would do. Um, ideally, yes, everybody would have a box of masks and we'd all feel safer and happier and maybe healthier, but we can't get them. Unless you really want to pay the uh, outrageous prices on Amazon, eh, you could. I'm not going to, but you could. So. Don't don't get too wrapped up on the mask thing, uh, you know. Unless you get COVID nineteen, and they need to stop you um, it, and they need to stop you from transmitting it, uh, a mask would be helpful. Oh, another question from Chris, the viewer: Is albuterol effective in keeping airways open if you have COVID nineteen? So the short answer is, to a point, yes. Uh, albuterol dilates the uh, smooth muscle in the bronchi and keeps things open. Uh, but if COVID-19 progresses to the point where you have, say, pneumonia, you're also gonna need to get that fluid load out of the lungs. But the albuterol most certainly would, would help ease symptoms. So, probably effective, yes. Um, would I refill my inhaler early if I could afford to? Probably. You know, find a good local independent pharmacy and uh, get the cash price. Might be worth doing. Uh, so yeah, that was a good question. Ooh, down to three viewers. Wow, it's getting tough. But that's okay. First live stream. We got this. Um, <clears throat> the other thing a, a lot of people don't realize is the numbers that are being reported are probably 10 times under what they actually are. And there's two reasons for that. First, we can't test everybody. Oh. Um, second, there are always cases that don't get reported or are misclassified. It, it's just the nature of epidemiological survey. Um, it would not surprise me if you could test everyone on the planet that you have 
you know, a certain number. Well, okay, so, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's back up. If you have 11 million people in a city like Wuhan, and you could test every single individual, 80% of those 11 million, if they were all there, would probably be infected. Does that mean they're all sick? No. Does that mean they're all going to need hospitalization? No. What it's going to mean is you have an 80% rate of infection and you're going to have 80% of that 80% having cough and cold type symptoms. Then you're going to have that 20% that have more severe disease and then out of that 20% you're going to have people that require hospitalizations, things of that nature. But the numbers are skewed to the low side because we can't test everybody. Um, containment. So a, a lot of people don't quite understand why the entire nation of China shut down. And that's really a containment effort. It's not going to be 100%. If you, if you look at history of epidemics you will see that containment and quarantine push your infection curve to the right, which means that buys your system time and slows down the infection so it doesn't overwhelm you. Is quarantine and containment 100%? No, it's not. Do we need it to be? In most cases, probably not. If you look at flu, if you look at measles, if you look at all the other transmissible virus diseases, quarantine and containment works to again push the infection curve to the right by your health system time. Uh, we don't quite know exactly how infective COVID-19 is. Uh, what we do know is it has a high r naught value and that means the higher the r naught the higher the infectivity. So if I were to get COVID-19, a high R naught means I would be able to spread it to more people in a faster way. Um, a very common vaccine preventable illness with a high R naught is German measles or rubella. And when we didn't have a vaccine for that, it was a scourge. It was something you didn't want to get. So don't don't get all bent out of shape just because the coronavirus is new and novel and we don't have a vaccine. Human beings have th seen these type of diseases before and, and we adapt to them for the most part. Wow, five viewers, awesome. Ooh, and another texted question. Stop touching your face, okay. Oh, Joe, welcome. What is flu season? Is it a weather issue? Um, so, Joe, flu season is typically um, flu season is cyclical as it moves across the globe. It is not truly a season per se it's more of a time frame of when we're going to see flu so flu so flu starts in typically china and it moves across the globe and it hits us in september so we know flu season typically for the united states is september through february that's why our flu vaccines have a six month expiration date on them because that is technically the flu season. I hope that helps answer your question. So truly seasonal, no, it's just cyclical. It, but if we said it's flu cycle, you know, people really wouldn't get that. So flu season is really, it, it, it's a communication issue. I hope that answers your question. Um, what other questions do you guys have? Five viewers, one person in chat. 
Um, Joe, loved your uh, tailgate video, man. Your your body skills look about as good as mine. So, good work. So, <clears throat> what else can we talk about about COVID-19? Currently, there's no vaccine. And that's okay, because I give it about a year and we'll have one. Um, my background, for those of you that don't know, um, I spent about eight years in vaccine development, virology, immunology, mostly with animal viruses. Um, and I actually did work with a uh, coronavirus. Um, and it was pretty lethal to cats. It was a uh, feline coronavirus. And if memory serves me, feline coronavirus causes feline infectious peritonitis. Does not infect humans though. But there's a very effective uh, whole virus vaccine for that coronavirus. So knowing what I know, you could very easily make a coronavirus vaccine in six months. And when I mean make the vaccine, I mean make it, test it, get it on the market. But that's not gonna happen because bureaucratic BS. FDA, DEA, EPA, pick your uh, bureaucratic alphabet soup and, and they will make it a longer process. But for purely vaccine production sake, you can make an experimental vaccine very quickly. And I don't think we need a Cadillac vaccine. We need a basic vaccine. And when I mean va basic vaccine, I mean you grow the virus, you inactivate the virus or kill it with formaldehyde, you chop it all up, bottle it, add some aluminum adjuvant to it, and stick it in some people. Because really what you need to do is get some sort of immune response. Because once you prime the immune system, you're going to get better herd immunity. You know, I love the anti-vaxxers that say, oh, vaccines oh, are bad. No, vaccines are great. Vaccines are some of the best medicine we have. And if you don't know that or, or you have trouble figuring that out, Google smallpox, okay? That, that should seal it. The polio vaccine effort. Again, no issues there. Yes, the first vaccines weren't that great. However, a vaccine was better than getting polio. And in the 1950s, if I had to take the risk of we are all going to die, vaccines will not work, COVID-19 will mature into a stronger form. I hope not. Um, I, I don't think it will necessarily mutate. It could. Um. Oh, Liz, Liz, welcome. Thank you. Welcome to the live stream. I'm sure uh, you're going to have some good questions. Are certain ethnic populations more susceptible to the virus? No, I think that's bullshit. I don't know how you would engineer a virus to attack one ethnicity over another. Um, I, I think that's wishful thinking on bigots' parts. Uh, just Some ethnic groups may express a receptor a little more preferentially, but uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't think so. So thank you for that awesome question, Liz. I, I don't think so. And, and let's see, T. Trod, I wonder who that, I, I don't know who you are, but welcome. You know, I, I, I really don't think, I think the vaccine will work. I, I really do, because we know enough about making vaccines at this point that I, I think we'll get it right the first shot around. Now, the, the possibility of it mutating into a stronger killer form, I mean, we have seen that before 
with other epidemic viruses. Um, if you look at the 1918 flu pandemic, you had an initial mild wave, mild wave. Uh, then it circulated around the globe and came back with a vengeance like the Grim Reaper. Well, it was the Grim Reaper and uh, totally laid waste to things and killed a bunch of people. Uh, and then it came through a third time again as a milder wave. Um, could the coronavirus do that? Yes. It's a possibility. How high is that possibility? I don't know. I mean, let us think about coronavirus for a second um, and remember that that is a uh, positive sense, or is it negative? It's one or the other. It's an RNA virus. So yes, it is inherently less stable than something like uh, a DNA virus, like a herpes virus. So it will mutate faster. But I don't know that, based on what I've read, that the coronavirus would mutate and shift that quickly. It's a good question, though. Um, wow, it's 9.23 and I have five people watching. This is great. You know, this live stream thing is almost like doing radio. You're, you're talking to a, essentially a mic, you have a delay, and you kind of got to keep going. Um, if you had asked me in college if I'd be live streaming on the internet, I would have laughed at you. Because, well, we really didn't have a great internet. When I was in college, we had flip phones. I know some of you guys on the live stream probably uh, had no cell phones in college, and that's okay. So, any other interesting burning questions? Um, my thoughts about coronavirus. It's not related to the beer. Save the corona beer. Drink it. Don't put masks on it. Um, if you have the coronavirus, ah, well, that's an interesting question, Joe. Um, only if there's an outbreak. Only, excuse me. Typically, you only have to adopt sanitation cleaning measures when you have a um, outbreak of Norwalk virus or a diarrheal disease or uh, the flu. Once you have confirmed cases in a, a school, then yeah, you would adopt a more rigorous um, cleaning procedure. But to do it just for the hell of it, I don't necessarily think that will help. Are, are you going to school, Joe? Or are you in a high traffic area? I'm curious. It's odd. I set up this live stream. Oh, another... Yes. Lime juice does cure the corona disease. Um, it's, it's two part lime to one corona and you repeat that six times. <laughs> oh, Liz, that is an excellent question. Will COVID-19 kill squirrels? Asking for Dan. The short answer is probably not. Dan will have to shoot his own squirrels. You work at a college. Uh, Joe, you're screwed. Duck and cover now, my friend. No, in all seriousness, Joe. Um, if your college were in a town that has cases of coronavirus, if I were working there, I would be wiping down my door handles. Um, I would, um, so, well, so if you look on the back of a Lysol container, it says it kills human coronavirus. 
theoretically, spitballing extrapolation, I think that Lysol may kill COVID-19. Theoretically, and I can't test this because I have no COVID-19 to culture, um, if it would kill SARS, yeah, it would probably kill COVID-19. I, I would trust Lysol, uh, diluted disinfectant, Lysol spray for contact time. Um, I, the, the COVID-19 thing, I, I, I remember the scene from the first Naked Gun movie uh, where the, the, um, the hell was that guy's name? He had gray hair. Um, it will come to me. Nano silver can be used for immunity, vitamin C injections. Um, yes, you could use herbal medicine like that. I think that's Mary Todd. Maybe it is. I don't know. Um, I, I don't fall for the vitamin C thing. I, I think vitamin C is a great ploy for selling vitamin C. Oh, it cures everything. Just like, by the way, did you know, <laughs> vitamin D is the vitamin of choice for preventing the coronavirus. 5,000 IUs a day. Leslie Nielsen, yes, damn it, that's the name I couldn't come up with. Do you remember when Leslie Nielsen and his love interest were having safe sex and they both were wearing the giant condoms? That's what I think of when I want to protect from COVID-19 is everybody walking around in giant condoms. Um, sadly, I don't sell those at the drugstore either or I would um, be selling those. Um, anyway, vitamin C injections and uh, silver bring up an interesting question of what can you do to prevent viral infection? Uh, one of the guys I work with suggested that we should all use Zycam, the zinc product, shove it up our noses and uh, prevent the coronavirus. Eh, maybe. Uh, definitely a fan of vitamin D. Um, I have heard CBD oil is uh, Wow, okay, thank you for getting your friend to watch, Chris. Um, she wants to know, what will scientists do if it mutates? How long does it take to rework a vaccine? So, to rework a vaccine, it depends on how the vaccine's made, um, and it depends on how fast you can grow that new mutant strain of coronavirus. Um, assuming it grows well in fermenters on CHO cells, you can rework a vaccine in eight months. Um, and, and that would be speedy. See, the, the, a lot of people don't realize that you have a couple of different ways to make a vaccine. And they all start with growing the virus. And you can grow the virus in chicken eggs like we do for the flu. Uh, or you can get these thousand liter bioreactors or fermenters and have these um, suspensions of cells growing and in this suspension of cells you add the virus and it propagates then you filter it all down you run it through some filters and out the other end comes concentrated virus yeah you probably have to put it through an ultra centrifuge but maybe not um, if you have to do column purifying uh, for antibody selecting a particular strain that would add more time but we're, we're going far afield the, the point is you can rework vaccines relatively quickly we do it every year for the flu the guys at the CDC sit there with a dartboard they hold their thumb up and they they throw it at the board and say oh these are the strains we're going to use this year then they grow them up and put them in a vaccine 
All right. Next question. Or I'm just going to keep talking. See, that's the neat thing about this. I can just talk and talk. I know some of my coworkers are uh, enamored of my ability to talk. Thanks, very informative answer. Yes, it was a little far afield there, Chris. It was an informative answer. Uh, I have all of this vaccinology stuff floating around in my head that I don't use very often, and uh, it's kind of nice to you know, take it for a walk on occasion. Um, so yeah. What else can we talk about? Coronavirus killing squirrels, that would be bad for Dan and his squirrel habit. Um, but, I mean, coronavirus does infect mammals. So, you know, bat soup. Who, who eats bat soup? I mean, really. Who looked at a bat and said, hmm, I think I'm going to put that in soup. I certainly wouldn't look at a bat and say that. But then again, I, there, there are a lot of things I would say that about, you know, muskrat. Who looked at a muskrat and said, hmm, that looks good? I mean, there's probably a virus hiding there, too, for the people eating muskrat. That's a joke, for the love of God, please don't, you know, take that to the extremes. I love the vaccinology shit, good job. Thank you, sir. Um, there's tons of that, where the, tons more where that came from. Um, but in all seriousness, a lot of people on YouTube are very, very much taking this to the nth degree. It is the sign of the coming of the end. The shit is going to hit the fan. Boy in the bubble, John Travolta. You know... Was John Travolta the boy in the bubble? I'm not that old. A lot of ancient cultures have disappeared. Virus, maybe. Well, yeah, that is that is potentially it. Yes, Liz, the common cold is a coronavirus. At least one of them. Uh, the majority of the common cold are rhinovirus, and that's a different family of virus. Um, but yes, the, the, the two or three strains that are not SARS or MERS can produce common cold symptoms. That is correct. Hopefully, Liz, you are enjoying a cold beverage while uh, chuckling at my live stream. Sadly, the only cold beverage I'm enjoying is a uh, seltzer water. Which brings me to another point. If you don't have hand sanitizer, damn it, you can use vodka. Some may say it's a waste of vodka, but you can use vodka. Old West medicine. You know, you get a snake bite, you pour whiskey on it. Yeah, it's all good. If you get the coronavirus, sprinkle some vodka on it. Or whiskey, your choice. Theoretically, no. If you don't drink a ton, you're probably still likely to get the coronavirus. See, this whole coronavirus thing makes me sit and think, what herbal medicines do we have? You know, I, I'm not an herbalist. I'm a pharmacist. Somewhere deep in the past, there were pharmacists that were herbalists. I am not that guy. Um... My, my interest in plants is purely academic for the medicinal point of view um, and mostly steering people away from bad choices. You know, ginkgo biloba, warfarin, yeah, these don't go together. Uh, but I digress. Um, well, let's see, how long has this live stream been going? I haven't a clue. There should be a ticker somewhere. There isn't. Of course. Anyway. Um, this may be the first of many live streams, or we may all 
or, or the feedback may be so bad that, you know, this live stream isn't such a good idea. Mm, we'll see. Uh, oh, there's the ticker, 35 minutes. I, you guys have been listening for 35 minutes. You guys are awesome. Um, Joe, if you're still listening, I appreciate it. Um, and all of your videos where you're cleaning out your grandfather's shop, excellent content, man. Um, also, just an aside to the people listening, did you sell that anvil? I hope you did because it looked like a decent one, even with the chips in the face. Speaking of anvils, when you encounter a problem in life like the coronavirus, you need a bigger hammer or a bottle opener, you know, depending on which corona. Um, I technically joined a guild of blacksmiths, but that's for another live stream. Hopefully they don't have the coronavirus. Um, hmm, what else to talk about? What other questions do you have? Type them right in the comments there. I was hoping uh, Scout Crafter was going to stop by. But that's okay. He missed a great live stream. You never sell anything. You know, Joe, Joe, that is the first sign of being a hoarder, my friend. That is definitely the first sign. But that's okay. Speaking of hoarding, I still have that Pinewood Derby car you sent me. And uh, Liam and I are going to build that hopefully this week. So we'll get some video of that shot. Which reminds me, my brother made a prediction about this whole YouTube thing, and, and sadly, I think he's correct. Um, I've managed not to get through anywhere near as many projects as I wanted to. Um, and mostly that's just been because there's just been other stuff going on. Work, extracurricular work, stupid work, parenting stuff, scouts. And, and, and the driving need to sleep. I, I'm a fan of sleep. Hmm. Well, folks, uh, 30, so uh, we're going to go to 45 minutes. I'll come up with more stuff to talk about. Uh, so, Corona is a description of the surface glycoproteins of the virus. If you look at it under an electron microscope, it has a it has little points on it that look like a crown. So it literally is a um, it, it's a descriptive term. Most things in biology are descriptive. Uh, the taxonomies are descriptive. Um, and there's a whole lineage of breaking down viruses and once you see it under the electron microscope the first guy that looked at it said "Ooh, it looks like it has a crown on coronavirus has North Korea been affected probably maybe um, the North Koreans are very close-lipped I'm sure they're not gonna tell us whether they are or they aren't and you know given their economic, socio-political status, I'm going to go with. Yeah, no, I have no idea. But thank you for the question. That is an interesting question. Spanish for crow? Hmm. Not quite sure what that means. But that's okay. Uh, what else? I mean, I could. Uh, what what could I talk about now? I've talked about quarantines. I've talked about being prepared. I've talked about not freaking out. Hand washing is important. You know, hand washing. Um, covering your coughs. I was just telling Emily tonight, you know, 
cover your coughs. Don't exactly care for Trump, but I hope he locks the U.S. down for COVID. No travel in and out. Uh, George, I think we're past that point, my friend. Um, I, I think what you're going to see is over the next month, as we get more testing um, kits, you're going to see we're going to catch cases that are already here. A at this point, travel restrictions... I don't think you're going to do it. Exactly. It's already here. Why lock it down? Um, yeah. Uh, Liz says, I heard Johns Hopkins doc say that he believed that 40% of the U.S. would contract COVID-19. Do you think this is accurate? No. I think he's under-reporting it. Uh, I think it's going to be more like 80%. Uh, yes, sorry. Hand washing and not touching your face. I, I think we're looking at more of an 80% infection rate only because this is a novel agent. You have to remember, novel viral agents burn through a population and infect everybody when there's no herd, herd immunity. And that's really what we don't have. Um, and that's what makes it a bit of a question mark, a bit of an unknown. The infection rate is going to determine or depend on that first wave. If if my great, well, let's see, my mother. If I had very elderly relatives and they were in a nursing home, I would be very frightened for them. If I had a family member that was on O2, I, I would be worried. Um, anybody that has any sort of severe underlying illness, I think they're going to have problems hope they don't, but they, they could. Ideally, if we limit the spread, push that infection curve to the right, and, and kind of buy people time, I think it will be better. But this is going to be, I, I think 80% would not be unreasonable if the transmission is as high as they think it is. I think if we look at Washington State, I, I think we're going to have a good feel for how this is going to play out since they have the highest number of cases currently. But again, this is not something that I would not go to work tomorrow about. What am I, who am I kidding? I would be stuck at work anyway. Um, <clears throat> Will our healthcare system be able to take it? Well, that's that's the that's the million dollar question. Um, the thing that made the Chinese outbreak and the Chinese outbreak is wrong. No, no, no. Jesus. The initial outbreak in Wuhan and the swift reaction of the Chinese government. You still saw an overwhelming of their healthcare system. And their healthcare system has capacity about like our healthcare system. So in that case, quarantine and travel restrictions would buy local health systems more time, theoretically. Um, do I think our health system has the excess capacity to take up a mass infection event? No. Is there any health system on the globe that has that capacity? The short answer is no. You just, you don't have it. That's what made the 1918 flu pandemic so bad, is you go back and look at that, high infection rate, high morbidity, high mortality, um, and you there saw society overwhelmed. 
but that's what you have when you have a novel agent. Joe Shop, let's see. Sadly, Joe, no. The flu shot only protects against the flu. Uh, and as I recall, there is no genetic or antigenic cross-reactivity with influenza virus and the COVID-19. But I hope you got your flu shot nonetheless because the flu sucks too. Flu kills about 50,000 people a year, so flu shots are good. If you haven't gotten your flu shot, go see your local pharmacist. They'll take care of you. If you don't have health insurance, ask for the cash price. Um, yeah, again, I don't know of any health system that can handle a, have that sort of capacity. I mean, the Chinese government had to build massive hospitals in 10 days for the number of cases they had, assuming those numbers were accurate. Again, that's, that's the other part of the issue here. Since the CDC was not put on the ground in December, a lot of what's been circulated is not good information. It's alarmist. I mean, if you look at some of the stuff that comes out on Twitter, it, it'll, uh, you know, give you pause, let us say. Um, but again, that's, you know, I, I went on TV today and told people, be prepared. Don't hoard masks. Well, that's true. I mean, you can't hoard something that's not available. And I don't know that hoarding a mask will fix it. Um, some countries use a mix of AIDS medicine. Well, they're trying to throw something up on the wall and see what sticks. Most of the AIDS meds are antiviral. Um, HIV is a negative sense RNA virus. So theoretically, Antiviral meds for AIDS should maybe possibly, on a good day, work for another RNA virus. My personal theory is that new flu vex or the flu drug out, uh, Zofluza, that one I would love to see them test that. Because as I recall, that is a polymerase inhibitor or a xan I don't know. It inhibits viral replication. And I think it will do, it has possibilities against COVID-19. Don't quote me on it, just a theory. It's a good theory. Don't have access to the lab to test it, but it is a good theory. So yeah, a lot of countries are throwing lots of AIDS meds, excuse me, anti HIV antivirals at COVID-19 in cocktails to try to stop it. Reasonable science, probably not going to work, but thank you for the question. Never had a flu shot in 30 years. I've been around many people with it, never caught it. Why would I start now? Well, I, uh, Trey, I guess it depends on how old you are. Uh, generally, the immune system starts to wane in the 50s, early 60s. That's why we recommend flu shots for people that as they advance in age, because your, your natural immunity needs a boost. I've gotten flu shots since 2001, and I've had the flu once. That was probably the year the flu shot didn't work. Which is an interesting thought because a lot of people get bent out of shape. Oh, the flu shot, it's only 40%. Well, 40% is better than zero. And most vaccines to be on the market have to be at a higher level than that. Measles, mumps, rubella, tetanus, their protection rates are all in the 80s and 90s. Um, so they're pretty good products. Flu is so low because it's hard to predict, A, 
what shot, what strains to, to use. And second, the virus mutates as it moves across the globe. So the strain circulating in China may be 20% different when it hits the US and your vaccine's less effective. The flu shot is a Yeah, so yeah, Joe, there's some price gouging going on there, my friend. I have a I have a stash I'll sell you cheap, half price. Just kidding, I, I don't have a stash. Um, I wish I did, because I'd be selling them on Amazon right now. Yeah, I looked, and uh, N95s are going for $80 up. Um, I, I stopped in at Home Depot one night after work, and they had N95s for $15 a mask. Um, so yeah, there, there's definitely a little bit of uh, profiteering going on here in the mask and PPE department. Funny story. I was going to do this live stream in a Tyvek goggles and a surgical mask, but I have the goggles. Um, I could have bought a Tyvek suit, but I couldn't get a surgical mask. So, I'm doing the live stream just kind of sitting here. Eight people. Excellent. Yeah, we might keep this going longer. Um, and, you know, it's interesting because there are some people that say, oh, masks don't work. Well, masks are better than no masks. Um, when I worked with viruses in the lab or in the animal facility, we had to wear N95s and have a fit test because that was the best protection we had against aerosolized virus. Was it 100%? No. Was it better than not wearing a mask? Yes. Was it better than wearing a surgical mask? Yes. Um, so N95s are good. Yeah, there's always somebody to up, up, uh, up show me. Downtown Portland. So is he walking around in a Tyvek or is he walking around in a full-on hazmat suit? Because there is a different difference. The hazmat suit is uh, decontaminatable uh, through the bleach shower and you can reuse it. Tyvek, you know, it's one and done. But that would be kind of humorous to see. Actually, this 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 live stream thing is is once I got it set is is kind of nifty. Um, I may have to try live streaming a, a project down the road here. That would be interesting. Probably not as interesting as COVID nineteen, but you know that is it. Going to bed, hun? Okay. I have seven people on my live stream. That's awesome, dude. I know. Even Cousin Chris. Hi, Chris. Okay. Full on hazmat. Nice. You know, if you got it, wear it. Um. Yeah, he probably is trolling, and, and I would think just like the yo-yo on the New York subway, he, he might catch a beating for it. Anyway, I would have gave the guy a good beating on the New York subway that pretended to spill coronavirus. So, so yeah, 2020. Uh, I'll pass that along, Chris. <clears throat> so. Oh, uh, you know, I, I just recalled something. Let's see if we can do this. There are a couple of great channels I wanted to plug while I was uh, on the live stream. The first is the History Guy. 
History Guy is awesome. I love the History Guy. The History Guy does 10 to 15 minutes snippets of forgotten history. Did a wonderful show on variolation, which is the precursor to vaccination. Um, absolutely awesome stuff. You know, if I could get away watching the History Guy more, I would. Let's see if we can find him here. Oh, Garnet Tools is streaming. Damn it, YouTube algorithm. Why don't you show me? There he is. Bear with me. Hold, hold your thought. There he is. Patreon, where for just around three dollars a month, you can support the work we do here at the History Guy. And if you're a patron, you get to see all the videos that we put out on YouTube without the advertisements. And in addition, you get one extra video a month that's exclusive for our patrons. All right. Anyway, love the History Guy. Um, some of my other favorite channels. This episode of the Great War is sponsored by Curi. The Great War Channel, absolutely excellent. Uh, history on the Great War. They also do a bit on the 1918 flu epidemic. Excellent watching. Um, Joe's Shop, always good stuff. The post-apocalyptic inventor, he's kind of interesting. Oh, Medcram. This guy does great coronavirus stuff. A little, little long and boring because he does this whole, um, every day he does the numbers. It's, it's like listening to the stock report. Yes, we have uh, coronavirus cases in uh, uh, Mumbai at 35, and we have coronavirus cases in uh, London at 2, and we have four people dead here. And, oh, my God. Dude, don't do the numbers. Just, just don't. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, mop level four, nice. So he's got the air tank and the rebreather and the whole bit. I bet that's awesome to see. If I wasn't live streaming myself, I'd head over there and check it out. Ah, yes, let us see. We have a question from the audience. My friend who is watching would like information on the virus life on different kinds of surfaces, doorknobs, desks, toilets, etc. So, virus life on surfaces is going to vary. The estimates have been three days to nine days. We're not really sure. We don't have good data. That's about all I can tell you. It does tend to hang around supposedly longer than the flu virus. Don't know. To be determined. Stay tuned. I'm hoping it's less resilient on surfaces rather than more. Um, and just for the record, no, I do not think it's a bioweapon escaped from a Chinese factory. It's a very popular theory. I think it's wrong for a couple of reasons. One, you can pick up a lot of viruses cross-contaminating out of animals into people. Happens with the flu. Uh, we have that documented. There's also a study that documented transmission out of bats into humans. So that's the second piece of evidence. Uh, third piece of evidence, I don't necessarily believe the New York Times article that quoted the Mossad that said that they thought it was a bioweapon. I just, I don't. I, there, there's no... 
there's no good evidence that would suggest it is a bioweapon. So that's what I think about that. I mean, I could be totally 100% wrong. I mean, it's just my opinion. It's my YouTube channel. I give you my best guesses um, based on the data I have. Um, you know, obviously, if you. The CDC is a great place to go for reasonable information. Uh, National Library of Medicine, if you like to peruse scientific articles, put in coronavirus. Wonderful reading. Great bedtime reading. Um, yeah. Wow, I've spent an entire hour talking about the coronavirus. I have eight people watching. Uh, I can keep answering questions for a bit, or I can shut it down. I'm not sure what to do. I'm not sure what the point of ending the live stream is. Anyway. Um, but as far as it on surfaces, I, I would think Lysol is the way to go. Hey, Joe, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it, my friend. Uh, catch you in your next video. And it is past my bedtime, too. I have to work tomorrow. So I think we're going to uh, wrap this up, say goodnight. Thank you to Mary and Liz and Trey for all stopping in. If you didn't leave a comment, thank you for stopping in as well. Have a great night.